tell you, you don't think about God. You think if you're going to die, your mind would go to God, but it's not what you think. The thing was to get out, get out, get out. I've got the baby in my arms and I went upstairs. There was so much shrieking and panic. I saw the lift had stuck between the floors and there there were people inside those poor wretched people must have been drowned like rats in a trap. I was scared, really scared. I didn't, I couldn't think of anything or what to do, you know. And Harold, he uh, had presence of mind for the lifestyle harm me. The captain says the ship can't sink and we're quite safe. I looked up and the, the Lusitania was just about ready to roll on top of us. That's the only time I prayed. And I said, oh God, if I've got to die, let me die in the water. I waved to my husband as he went down with the boat. As long as I could see him, we waved. I swam, I suppose, about 50, 60 yards away. And then I saw her start to take her final plunge. People were jumping overboard, people were being thrown overboard, boats were being smashed to pieces, there was utter chaos, until finally she, the waters covered her completely. And the next thing I know, we were in the water. My baby gave a terrible scream and we both sank. And I came up and uh, the baby was gone. Some way or other, I got my arms over an oar and one arm through a life preserver with a dead woman in it. You didn't hear many cries, but the terrible thing was the people that swam up to you and begged to be taken in and you couldn't. We were packed. We were packed one on top of the other. After 18 minutes of horror and panic, the great liner disappears. Recent dives to the Lusitania reveal that the second explosion was not caused by the ship's cargo of ammunition. second explosion occurred in boiler room number one, where ICC water turned a fiery furnace into a pressurized bomb. The explosion caused by the boiler would have been significant. It would have been felt throughout the ship. It would have caused damage to the bulkheads around the number one boiler room, which would, again, aggravate the flooding condition of the ship. It takes three hours for the first rescue boats from Queenstown to reach the survivors. Far too late for hundreds who die of exhaustion and exposure. On this trawler, this lady had lost her baby, and she saw me with mine. She hit me. You know, of course, I didn't blame her at all. Of course, I was just crazy. She lost her child. Evidently, I had been picked up as a dead body. I evidently must have made some movement with this blanket. And uh, they said, uh, oh, quick, there's life here. so sudden that only six of 22 lifeboats reach Queenstown. 800 of the living move about Queenstown in a haze of disbelief. Among them is Captain
Captain Turner, miraculously washed clear of the bridge. He wanders the town, devastated and ashamed, as remnants of his magnificent ship wash ashore. The most elite of the Lusitania's passengers are not spared. Alfred Vanderbilt, Charles Froman, art collector Sir Hugh Lane, writer Albert Hubbard. In the days to follow, U.S. Consul Wesley Frost works around the clock, supervising the recovery of bodies. one pound to fishermen for every body recovered. For Alfred Vanderbilt's body, 1,000 pounds. But Vanderbilt is never found. Of 134 children aboard, 94 are lost. The unidentified are laid to rest in mass graves. Capitan Schwieger nears port. Radio operator Rikowski notifies German command. The U-20 has fired only one torpedo and has sunk the great Lusitania. The crew of the U-20 return as heroes. In London, Schwieger's report is again intercepted by room 40. The British fear the ship's cargo of ammunition may have cost 1,200 lives. The intercept is suppressed. Unaware, President Wilson tries to calm his furious nation. There is such a thing as a man being too proud to fight. There is such a thing as a nation being so right that it does not need to convince others by force that it is right. Wilson's pacifism is met with contempt. For many, the death of 123 Americans is an act of war. The public demands to know how and why this tragedy was allowed to happen. Investigation is led by Lord Mersey, an eminent Liverpool barrister. Mersey is unaware of the flurry of letters being written by the British Admiralty. A plan is hatched to make a scapegoat of Captain William Turner. I feel absolutely certain Captain Turner of the Lusitania is a scoundrel. It is considered politically expedient that Captain Turner be most prominently blamed for the disaster. One critic leads the rest, Winston Churchill. The admiralty case against the captain should be pressed by a skillful counsel. We shall pursue the captain without check. After four weeks of investigation, Captain Turner is found not guilty. There can be only one demon, the German captain, Walter Schwieger. The whole blame for the cruel destruction of life in this catastrophe must rest solely with those who plotted and with those who carried out the crime. But 
But Mersey does do service to the Admiralty's cover-up. Two torpedoes struck the ship simultaneously. Speaker's message, intercepted by Room 40, clearly states that only one torpedo was fired. The Lusitania was struck somewhere between the third and fourth funnels. In fact, the torpedo struck much further forward, close to the ammunition. The Admiralty is desperate to conceal that the ship's cargo exploded. Exploration of the wreck proves their cover-up is needless. The ammunition played no role in the sinking. It did not explode. Computer analysis discloses the real cause for the ship's rapid sinking. The ship's design is examined. The conditions of the disaster reproduced. It is the Lusitania herself. She has been built for peacetime speed. Her designers never considered the perils of a U-boat's torpedo. What we've been able to see is that the damage caused by the lone torpedo was enough to cause the flooding throughout the Lusitania that would lead to the progression of the Lusitania sinking. The exact location of where the torpedo hit was not critical to sinking Lusitania. More damaging was the operating condition that she was at, with the doors open so that flooding was able to progress from compartment to compartment. When she immediately lost power, the electric doors were unable to be closed, and this allowed large amounts of water to enter not only the number one boiler room, but spaces forward and after that. And as the ship went more and more nose down, the water that had flooded in is rushing to the bow of the ship anyway. If the flooding had been contained to the compartment that was damaged by the torpedo, the ship most likely would have survived. It would have taken on water and it would have healed, but it would not have been catastrophic. However, the compartment was open to other compartments. So no matter where the torpedo had hit in this area, it most likely would have exposed several compartments to flooding, causing the ship to heel over at excessive angles and taking on more and more flooding through the open portholes as well. from safety, the Lusitania crossed from one era to another. Her sinking marked the death of innocence and the beginning of total war. The man who destroyed her, Walter Schwieger, is killed in 1917. His U-boat sunk by the British Navy. Captain William Turner survives another torpedo attack while commanding a troop ship. 36 of his men are lost. Despite this grim record, Turner is promoted to Commodore of the Line. But the Admiralty's indictment will haunt him for the rest of his life. Within a month of the Lusitania disaster, Winston Churchill steps down as First Lord of the Admiralty. Churchill never reveals his knowledge of Room 40's secrets. Secrets kept from America. Even President Wilson is not informed that British intelligence had broken the German codes and that the British knew Walter Schwieger's U-boat lay in the path of the Lusitania. If Churchill did intend to draw America into World War I, he underestimated American caution. Two more years will pass. But when the United States joins the fight, it is the Lusitania her soldiers vow to avenge. A glorious ship, sacrificed. Her innocent passengers, pawns in a cruel new era. There's something about at the sea. You, you can't escape. I don't think it's possible to 
reproduce the horror and the, uh, of a scene like that. I did for about, oh, good 10, 12 years, wake up in the middle of the night in the most awful nightmare, feeling I was being sucked down and found myself standing on my bed to, uh, to get out of being drowned. It seems like since I got back from that trip, everything I do, I do wrong. Wednesday on Discover Magazine. Got the need for speed? Then hang on as scientists reveal the key to beating time from thoroughbreds to the fastest jet. Speed. This Wednesday on Discover Magazine, only on the Discovery Channel.